oh, you're pretty aggressive. You're going to, like you just said, you'll knock my mom to the floor. <laughs> That's pretty aggressive in itself. Oh. My yeah, mom is super... My mom's joking. She's not going to knock your mom to the floor. I know, it's a joke. I know it's a she joke. Jokes. She doesn't get British humor. No, he doesn't get it. I don't think he gets humor full stop. <laughs> oh, my. Neither of y'all can sit here and tell me no, about she... what I should have done and what I should have because neither of you guys have ever been at the bottom. Get the violin out. Not even the slightest bit. I have you zero have no help. Idea what I have you zero are. help. I have, no I have zero help from anybody. And you're going to tell me you have zero help? Yeah, I do. That's a full face yeah, mask. And I've been with girls. I've been in a two guys me. I've been with two girls me and a guy. I've been. You see so many advanced. Yes, My I did. Yeah, I tried had... all of it. I did it once upon a time. I even had three guys me in Paris. Voy a hablar con mi papá cuando quiera. Okay, so cuando quiera. Quieres arruinar mi cena en serio? Estamos al punto de casarnos y tu papá ya no sabe. Un año más, ya no sabe. Lo, quizás muere antes de que sepa. Hey everybody, I just want to give a disclaimer. So I recorded this very early in the morning, right before work. And because of that, I sound so dead and also so uninterested in the episode. But I promise, it's still a good episode. But if you actually end up watching like the whole thing, then you have been promoted. <laughs> You are now one of my elite employees. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. And good luck. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to 90 Fiancé. So we're on season 10, episode 12, and we're going to start with Rob and Sophie. So we left off on them having an argument in an adult store, and on the way back, Rob is telling Sophie that she's making him look like a dog and that he doesn't feel like he's enough because she wants to have a side partner. Sophie says that she understands where he's coming from, and she just thought that he just wanted to have a go with a second girl, but she didn't know that Rob was just trying to support her. I don't think he was, but... <laughs> But anyways, they ended off on a good note and decided to move past it. Now he knows in the future. If any girl wants to get with him in any way, with me, without me, just tell her to go away and leave me alone and I have a stunning fiancé. So now Sophie and Bob are in his kitchen when her mom texted her that she's about to lean in 30 minutes. Bob is trying to be positive, but he looks stressed out. So Bob basically tells us that he's not a fan of her mom and she doesn't know how to shut up. And, oh my gosh, the disrespect. Like, I know you don't have to like her, but to say that in front of her daughter, we would be fighting. She doesn't know how to shut up when it's time to be quiet. That's rude. I'm just saying, though, your mom says some very pro problematic at the said, wrong time. What times. if I said to you, your mom doesn't know how to shut up if when she my needs mom, to? That if is my so mom, rude. If okay, so there goes to Sophie's mom, who's staying at a hotel. She gave Sophie the biggest hug and just straight up ignores Rob. Well, at first, because she then later acknowledges him. But then she says that she'll kill him if he hurts her. So I guess we're starting off great here. I don't know. <laughs> so she tells us that she's worried for Sophie, and then they sit down to talk, and the conversation hence towards their wedding. So they're talking about catching the bouquet, and because it's going to be a small wedding, it'll be basically between his mom and her mom catching the bouquet. So Sophie's mom makes a joke saying that she'll push his mom out the way for it, and Rob is like, well, she's pretty small and not aggressive. And Sophie's mom is like, what? I'm not aggressive. And Rob says, oh, you're pretty aggressive because you just said you would knock my mom down to the floor. <sighs> oh my gosh, Rob. It was just a joke. Like, you could not be serious right now. She's super tiny and, and not, not aggressive, so she's married. not going to... I'm not aggressive. I don't think so. Oh, you're pretty aggressive. You're going to, like you just said, you'll knock my mom to the floor. <laughs> That's pretty aggressive in itself. Oh, She's, she's just, not a great, she's just joking. So they say it's a joke, and he says that he knows it's a joke, but still. And mom is like, you just wanted to call me aggressive. And then he says that they were taking him little. Oh my gosh, does he need to watch this back? You're the one who took things little first. Like, what are you talking about? But then she says that he doesn't know how to take humor at all. And, oh jeez, like, she is on it. I can see why you argue, because when we talked about the bouquet and me tucking your mother to the floor, mm -hmm. you literally didn't take it as a joke. You I got, didn't, you got. I didn't take it seriously. He doesn't get British humor. No, he doesn't get it. I don't think he gets humor full stop. Anyway. Okay, so now it's the next day, and Sophie's mom comes over to their place. So she likes the courtyard, but she doesn't like the fact that the bathroom's outside. So she comes inside, and she checks out the place, and she kind of looks like a disappointed mom looking into her child's messy bedroom. Like, that's the vibe I'm getting from her. Dining room with no dining table chair. This is the bed and sofa and chilling area. 
So she basically says that's good for Rob, but not for her Sophie. <laughs> so after that, he asks Rob why he wasn't prepared, and he said that all his money went towards savings and the relationship. And then she says that a real man would have put the relationship on hold and gathered enough money for a place for the both of them. So Rob says that that's ridiculous, and it makes more sense for them to continue to see each other, and then later deal with it when they come together and then find a different spot after. And I don't know, like, I see what they're both talking about, but if I was Rob, and if I truly loved the person I was dating... I will put flying out and eating in nice places on hold to save money for a better living spot. Like, don't you want your girl to be comfortable and happy? A couple months of dealing with the spot and then finding a spot together, that seems way more accessible and way more like me and her will actually get to be together. So Sophie then comes in and talks about how she kept pressuring him to go get a job and he kept saying that he was going to get a job and get a job, but he never did it. So then he starts going off on them about how they've never been at the bottom and when they need help, they can just call somebody and so on. But if I'm being honest okay if i was at the bottom i would do my damn best to get to the top why would i stay there pursuing no job and being content with the way things are like it doesn't make any sense and he's literally not even trying like i understand not getting help from people but his sister seems to be doing just fine okay like didn't they go up together didn't she also technically also start at the bottom i really truly like stand true to this I think you could have done more. You, you, you two are in this situation because you didn't put enough effort into saving up for it. And whether you like it or not, she can't work. You knew when she got here, she can't work. All he does is make excuses for himself. If you've never lived on your own and had to do it on your own, then, then shut up trying to tell somebody else what they should be doing. You don't know what the hell being at the bottom is unless, and then whenever you have ever been at the bottom, you just make a phone call and you're back up. Okay, so that's where the segment ends. Now for Nikki and Justin. So they're leaving and Nikki is still upset with Justin. So apparently Justin still doesn't get why she's mad at him. Like, come on. Nikki wants to leave the winery because before I get engaged with Nikki, I had some of, like, sex friend. I love Nikki. I want to be happy but Nikki feel betrayed. But then it gets worse. Nikki's like, I feel like I'm your sugar mama while you go and bang other girls. And Justin's like, we can try together. And Nikki's like, excuse me? And Justin's like, yeah, we can try with another girl. So you see, it's just fun banging. And Nikki's like, you want me to have a threesome? And then he's just smiling. Like, bro. And then he tells us that it's one of his dreams to have a threesome. And then he quickly said to have a threesome with two women. Because he knows damn well he doesn't want another dude in the mix. But then Nikki says that she did all of that in her 20s. And he said that he was with her in his 20s. And so he really couldn't experiment like that. And so she tells us that because he brought up the threesome, she now feels like she's not good enough for him. And so they head back home. And then she decides that she actually wants to talk to him instead of holding everything in. So she asked him if he did it protected or not. And he said protected. She then asked how many girls. And he said two. And do you guys believe that? Because I don't. Because because he already knows how mad she is, so why would he make it worse by saying the real number? So then Nikki says that she's ready to settle down, and she starts talking about all her experiences. And I've been with girls, I've been in a two guys me, I've been with two girls me and a guy, I've been- You see so many advanced. Yes, My I did, yeah, I tried had... all of it. I did it once upon a time. I even had three guys me in Paris. That didn't work too well, it was too much. And my goodness, three guys at the same time? Like, what are you even trying to convince him of? Like, now he's just going to want to do it more because he had all this experience. So Justin says that he wants to focus on them, but then he also wants to talk about the threesome after they get married. So now she doesn't know what to think of their future together. So now it's nighttime, and Justin goes to talk to his friend, and Nikki talks to her mom, and she tells her that Justin was cheating on her. And then she brings up the threesome, and her mom is just so shocked. Remember when I told you all those times where I was calling him and he was always on the road, or times where he just ignored my text messages and got nasty with me? on the phone I knew it, I knew it. but it's like I had the feeling in my gut so now I'm to Justin. He meets up with his friend and he tells him what happened. He then says that she wants to take everything under control and that he has a feeling that he isn't dealing with a woman but instead dealing with her masculine side. <sighs> How many times are you going to say the same thing? Like, okay, we get it. Dump her then and go get someone that meets all your requirements as a woman. Like, nobody's forcing you to be with her. So then they say that women are naturally manipulative. What? And that he needs to show his masculine side and man up. But if you were a man, you wouldn't have cheated on her, but okay. So it's back to Nikki, and she says that she's worried about the engagement celebration. Like, you're still going to have one? Like, what is wrong with these people? 
Moving on, now for Ashley and Monroe. So Ashley has a huge surprise for Manuel and it's his best friend, Jonathan. So they haven't seen each other in seven years and this is the first time I've ever seen this man so happy. So Ashley asked Jonathan how he learned English and he said he learned it from the streets. So she told that to Manuel and then Jonathan tells him that he has the best teacher to learn English from and Manuel is like, I just listened to her yap away. Remember the parents back home? Like that. Oh my gosh. What is this trend with men embarrassing their fiancés in front of their friends? Okay, so they decide to go and talk and Manuel says that he likes to fight with Ashley so they can get it out of the way so after they get married everything is smooth but does that make sense because if you overly fight then you might not make it to the altar but then he brings up how she's a big spender and then the conversation goes to how in america you get wrapped up in consumption and always buying things that you don't need which is facts okay because my mom recently asked me how much i had in my savings and it hit me like damn I don't have shit because I spend it all on shit I don't need. Okay, so Manuel then says that Ashley never dealt with any hardships and that that's the problem. He says that he misses Ecuador and his family and friends and the food, but here he's facing bullets with his chest. And I mean, I feel bad for the guy because it must be really hard, but also this is what he signed up for. So now it's the three of them and they head to the cafe together. So they're talking and then money gets brought up. Ashley says that he doesn't get it when she wants to spend money and he likes to save it. Also, he always brings up that the money that she spends can be used on his family back at home. So the friend is like they need to have it back of saving money and spending it on things that they enjoy. And then Manuel is like, she knew the baggage of bringing him here. Um, what baggage? You recently just told her about this. So he said that she only paid twice in two months and Ashley's like, yeah, and they should be lucky that they even got that. And exactly, like, what is his problem? She says that the money could be going towards her light bill, but instead she's giving it to his family that she's been separated from. So then Manuel's like, let's see if she can go to Ecuador and survive on $200 a month. Like, what? She shouldn't even be responsible for this in the first place. Honestly, this might sound insensitive for me to say, but he should have worked harder. Like, if he knew he was going to be in America with no job for a couple of months, he should have grinded his ass in Ecuador for about a year straight just to save up money for his family to survive on while he was gone. But to dump this on your fiancé at the very last minute and then get mad that she doesn't want to pay is just such a pathetic move for someone to make. And also, why does he feel like he is entitled to her money? Like, it doesn't make sense. Ellos lo necesitan, Ashley. Lo necesitan. Yo también, yo necesito, Manuel. Sí, yo también. Zapato, ropa, todo. Pero... So she gets up and she walks away and she says that she does so much to support him while Manuel continues to complain and now she starts to cry. Moving on, now for Anna Lee and Clayton. So it's the next day after Clayton embarrassed Anna Lee and I don't know why they put that banner of 59 days without sex, but whoever's editing these needs a raise because that was hilarious. So Clayton says that Anna Lee is not happy with him. Hmm, I wonder why. And Annalie says that if he needs to fix something in the relationship, then he should tell her and not his friends, or at the very least, bring it up when she's not there. So they're eating outside, and Annalie basically says that she didn't like the way that their first conversation was about their sex life, and that it made her very uncomfortable. So then he apologizes and says that he just says what's on his mind. And she's like, that's the first thing on your mind? And he's like, yeah, it's random. Oh my gosh, like, okay, I get it, but why then and there? So he apologizes again, and she's happy that he did, but she still found it rude, and is still bothered by but she hopes that things will improve more in their relationship. So now Kim and Clayton get together and Clayton is learning how to do a Peruvian dance to surprise Anna Lee with. There you go. Catch yourself. I feel like I'm limping. Am I limping? It, yes. That's an A for effort, right? He can get his shoulders and hips moving more than I expected, so I give him that. And music ends. Dun, dun. And wow. Okay, Clayton. Okay, off topic, but this might sound weird, but Clayton and Cameron are like in the perfect sync with each other. Like, look at the way they walk and then how they sit down. Like, isn't that like satisfying to see? Okay, anyways, so they start talking about Anna Lee and they bring up how she didn't tell her dad about Clayton. Clayton says that he wants to tell her dad, but he feels like she will break up with him if he did that. And so Cameron says that he thinks that she's uncertain with Clayton and so he wants him to reflect on the relationship. And then Clayton says, yeah, he understands. So Cameron comes and says goodbye to the both of them since they will be leaving soon. After he leaves, Clayton makes him and Anna Lee some food and while they're eating, he brings up her dad and she stops and looks at him. And she already looks so over the conversation and it hasn't even started yet. So she says that they don't need to talk about it. And Clayton says, it's been two and a half years. Like for real, Annalie, like what the f***? Clayton's then like they're about to get married and her dad still doesn't know. He won't know next year and that he'll probably die still not knowing. And Annalie's like, are you wishing for my father's death? Um, girl, 
you know damn well that's not what he meant. So long story short, she throws a fit and goes to the bathroom to cry. And now Clayton thinks that she's in danger because why the hell is she crying over this? And honestly, for real, girl, just grow up and tell him. Like, well, I don't know why she's making such a big deal out of this. Last but not least, Jasmine and Gino. So Gino signed them up for salsa dancing and he says that he's not very good at it. And I'm no salsa expert, but he looks like he's doing a really great job. So practice with Gino, he always hurts my fit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Now it's the next day and they go to the pier and Jasmine starts talking about her son. And then Gino says that he would also want a son of his own. Jasmine then says that she doesn't want another child and that her reason is that she has a lot of personal pain. Her youngest child has special needs, he's nonverbal, and it's hard for him to communicate. Jasmine says that people are very mean to her child and have no tolerance. People give them stares and ugly looks when he's not behaving and it hurts her a lot. So she doesn't know if she has the strength to do it again. And I completely understand where she's coming from. I've worked with children that are like on the spectrum that have special needs they are very hard okay you will love that child to death but you will still acknowledge that it's very hard so i completely understand where she's coming from but you know also understands and he gives her a hug and that's where their segment ends okay so that's the end of this video let me guys know some of your thoughts in the thoughts <laughs> let me know some of your thoughts in the comments below please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye